In this lesson, we're going to talk about log scales, specifically the pH scale, the decimal scale, and the Richter scale. And we want to introduce logarithmic scales because they are very useful when we're working with values which have a big range. In fact, they range over many, many orders of magnitude. And because that is the case, it's hard to interpret these numbers. So by creating a logarithmic scale or taking advantage of the logarithmic scale, that will allow us to change those values into much, much smaller numbers that are easier to interpret. So uh, the first scale we're going to talk about is the pH scale. So the pH scale is used to measure the acidity or the alkalinity of a chemical solution. And you study this in grade 10 science, so hopefully you didn't forget. But it's defined as so the pH of a solution is equal to negative log of H plus. H plus is the concentration of the hydronium ions. Okay, so when we talk about the concentration of hydronium ions, we can have something like this 0 0.0001 moles per liter. So if I didn't tell you that the con this was tomato juice that we we're working with, if I just showed you a concentration of 0 0.001 moles per liter, it's hard to understand whether this, whether this solution is safe to consume or not. So uh, we can also have another solution that, is, that has um, much less of a concentration, much lesser of a concentration of hydronium ions. So this is four times 10 to negative seven moles per liter. So we see how these values, there's a very big range of values we're working with. So by using this logarithmic scale, we can condense um, and interpret the acidity of solutions by using numbers from zero to 14. So seven being uh, the solution is neutral, and then less than seven, it's acidic, and then greater than seven, it's basic. I do want to mention that you can get a pH of less than zero and a pH of greater than 14, but we generally, the, the solutions that you work with, uh, they're generally ranging from zero to 14. Anyways, so we're working with tomato juice and we say that tomato juice has a hydronium ion concentration of approximately 0 0.0001 moles per liter. And we ask, what's the pH? Now, before I plug it into the phone, I want to say that the way the pH scale works, the reason why we're able to condense these numbers, so these, no, these concentrations into these pH values, is that the way it works is to go, let's say we're going down, to go from seven, a pH of seven to a pH of six. This solution with a pH of six is 10 times as acidic as a solution of pH of seven. So every time you go down, one unit on the pH scale, it's 10 times as acidic. So two units would be two tenfold changes, which is a hundred times. So for example, a solution of pH of five is uh, 100 times as acidic as a solution of pH of seven. If it's three units, it'd be 10 times 10 times 10, which is 1000. Okay, so that's how the pH scale works. And it's actually very similar to how the Richter scale works. So. Uh, let's punch it into the formula. So the pH of the tomato juice, negative log of 0 0.001. So this one, you actually don't need a calculator. I'm just going to check because 0 0.001 is uh, 10 thousandth. So 10 hundredth thousand, 10 thousandths. So the pH of tomato juice is 4, which means it's a little acidic, that's why uh, you shouldn't drink too much of tomato juice in one sitting. Uh, yeah, the pH is four. Okay, what about blood? Okay, the blood has a hydronium ion concentration of four times 10 to negative seven. Is it, is it acidic or basic? So it just punches into our formula. Oh, just in case you don't know how to type uh, scientific notation into your calculator. So four, let's put that four times 10. So this E button here, exponent times 10 to the negative seven. 6.4 approximately. So since, since 6.4 is less than seven, guess what? 
blood is slightly acidic. And then I have, uh, since we learned our logarithm rules, we're going to try to apply them and uh, generate a formula which determines the ratio of hydronium ion concentrations between two solutions. So let's just write down our two solutions. So this is the pH of my first solution. It's negative log the concentration of hydronium ions from our first solution. And then my second solution with another pH. So I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1. And why would I do that? Because I want to change it to exponential form now. So 10 to the negative pH of 1 equals the hyd hydronium ion concentration of my first solution. I can do that for my second solution as well. So you get 10 to the power of negative pH of 2 is equal to the hydronium ion concentration of my second solution. Now, since I'm looking for the ratio of the of the hydronium ion concentration of the two different solutions, therefore, if this, which is the hydronium ion concentration of my second solution, is equal to this, and the hydronium ion concentration of my first solution is equal to this, then I can write 10 to And then since I'm dividing two powers with the same base, I can subtract the exponents. So negative, negative is positive. Uh, you can reorganize that. So there you go. This is a handy formula which, con which uh, compares the concentration of hydronium ions. Now, Believe it or not, you actually didn't have to show all this work. I mean, uh, the algebra is really nice and uh, it does, it's not wrong, but this formula is basically telling you something that's quite obvious. That's telling you that the ratio of the, the hydronium ion concentrations is what we said earlier. Every time the pH uh, differ by one unit, it's a tenfold difference. It's 10 times as acidic or 10 times as basic, okay? So by finding the difference between the pH, you can automatically calculate the ratio of the hydronium ion concentrations between the two solutions. So you know what? Let's take a look. Okay, so I have Coke, which has a pH of uh, 3, and tap water has a pH of 6.2. Clearly, Coca-Cola is much more acidic than water. So how many times as acidic is Coca-Cola compared to tap water? And by the way, if you do this calculation, you would probably not drink as much Coke as you as you uh, do uh, from before. It is uh, pretty bad for you. So uh, let's just say the hydronium ion concentrations of Coca-Cola over water. And by the way, the pH of water in different areas are different. Um, so we have Coke and water. So you can look at the formula above that we generated, but just think about it. 6.2 is the pH of water, and Coke is a pH, uh, has a pH of 3. So I'm going to take 6.2 subtracted by 3. And you might be like, well, I, I want to take 3 and subtract it by 6.2. Well, if you wrote that down, I'm hoping you'll notice that it doesn't make many uh, make much sense because you'll get 10 to, 10 to the power of some negative exponent. You don't want a negative exponent. Coke is clearly many, many times more uh, acidic than than water. Okay, as a pH of 3 compared to 6.2. So this makes sense. This 6.2 minus 3, that tells you how far apart are they on the pH scale. And for each unit, it's 10 folds. Okay, it's 10 times as acidic. So, just uh, punch your calculator. So about 1,585 times, let's say. Wow, so Coca-Cola 
is 1,585 times as acidic as water. If I didn't tell you it was Coke, if I just said there's this, this is solution that I'm offering you to drink, it's 1,585 times as acidic as water, you probably wouldn't drink it, okay? Um, and let's write that down. Uh, how many times is it so? Coca Cola is 1,500, approximately 1,585 times as acidic as tap water. Okay, so that's our first scale we're going to work with today, our first logarithmic scale. And hopefully, you can see how the advantage of using the logarithmic scale. Okay, it takes these concentrations which vary greatly. Okay, you, you can have uh, 1 times 10 to the negative 3 and versus 1 times 10 to the negative, I don't know, like a 12. They, they vary, they have a very, very large range of values that they can take on. And it's hard to interpret because the range is so great. So by using this logarithmic scale, you take that range and it shrinks dramatically. Okay, so now we're working with numbers between 0 to 14. It's much more easier to interpret. Um, so yeah, that, that's a really powerful use of logarithms. So the next scale we're going to work with is the decibel scale. Okay, now the decibel scale is slightly different from the pH scale, the way it works. Okay, so you've, I'm sure you've heard of decibels, but the decibel scale provides a convenient way of comparing wide ranges of sound levels. Okay, so previously it's for measuring the acidity or alkalinity of a solution. This time we're working with sound levels. And uh, just like before, sound levels have a huge range. You can have someone whispering, you can have a rocket engine, and the intensity of those two sounds vary dramatically. So we want to do what we did before, which is shrink those, those uh, large differences into something much more reasonable, something that's very easy to interpret. So now be careful. This is the big difference between the decibel scale and the pH scale. Each increase of 10 decibels represents a tenfold increase in sound intensity. Okay, so it's no longer one unit, it's 10 units. 10 units for the decibel scale is tenfold increase in sound intensity. So we have this formula here um, that compares uh, the sound levels in decibels uh, equals 10 times the logarithm of the ratio of the sound intensities. Uh, hopefully this will this formula will make sense to you, uh, but we'll we'll try to do some questions and we'll go back to the question. So we'll go back to we'll do the question. And we'll go back to the formula. So how many times as intense as a whisper, which is thirty decibels, is a sound of the normal conversation? As a whisper. Okay, so. We have 60 minus 30. And you know what? I really don't even want to use the formula. So I'll just start off by saying the difference on the decibel scale between these two sounds, the whisper and the normal conversation, is 30 units. Okay? And each 10 unit change on the decibel scale is uh tenfold change okay 10 unit change on the decibel scale is tenfold as intense so i can tell you i can take the difference in the decibel scale and divide it by 10 right because that's how the decibel scale works and then i'll raise it to the power that this is my exponent this is the difference in decibels uh, on the decibel scale but i have to divide it by 10 because that's how my decibel scale is structured each 10 unit change represents a tenfold increase. Whereas before, if you looked at the pH scale, I didn't have to divide by 10. If I show you the pH scale, I'm, it was just 10 raised to the power of the difference on the pH scale. But unfortunately for the decibel scale, it's, it's structured differently. It was designed as n decibels on the, on the um, scale represent a tenfold increase in sound intensity. So anyways, there you go. That's the answer. And this is actually uh, 30 divided by 10 is 3, so this is 10 cubed, which is 1,000. Now, if you didn't like the way this was uh, done, like this was, to me, when someone writes this down, this is 
this demonstrates a very strong understanding of how this logarithmic scale works. But if you didn't like it, no problem. You can just do what you did and uh, plug it into the formula. But I, I want to show you this because um, this, this really is how the scale works. But the formula works too. So this is 30 divided by 10, which is 3. And then what we're going to do is change it to exponential form to isolate from the ratio. So you get the same thing. Okay. So how many times is intense as a whisper? Uh, therefore, the or a uh, normal conversation is 1,000 times as intense as a whisper. Okay. All right. Uh, the sound level in normal city traffic is approximately 85 decibels. The sound level while riding a snowmobile is about 32 times as intense. What is the sound level while, while riding a snowmobile in decibels? So let's say beta is the sound level while riding in a snowmobile. So it's 85 is the sound traffic, the normal city traffic uh, sound. And we're going to add by 10 log 32. Okay, so where does this come from? Because the ratio is 32. They told me that the snowmobile is 32 times as intense. And then, I, so I take log of 32 because 32 is a ratio, but I had to take this log and multiply by 10 because the, that's the way the scale is structured. Each increase of 10 decibels is a tenfold increase in sound intensity. So that's why the multiply by 10. Don't forget the 10. But to be honest with you, uh, this basically I, uh, you can create what I have here by using the formula that I have above. Uh, but I like just interpreting the scale. This to me shows a student understanding the scale. You work with the sound level and you can go from there. If it was the other one actually end up being subtracting because you can work with a sound that's not as intense. So 85 plus 10 log 32, so it's about 100.1 decibels. The sound level while riding a snowmobile is approximately 100.1 decibels. Okay, all right, last scale, the Richter scale. So you have a formula here for to measure the intensity of the uh, of an earthquake, but you, you actually can relate uh, the Richter scale back to the pH scale because the way the Richter scale is designed is pretty much the same as um, the pH scale. Each unit change on the Richter scale represents a tenfold change. So if I increase one unit on the Richter scale, it's 10 times as intense as before. And if it's two units change, it'll be 100. Three units will be 1,000, just like the pH scale. So that's why, if you look at the formula uh, for the uh, Richter scale, there's, there's not 10 times logarithm of the ratio of intensity. It's just log of the ratio. Okay, that's why you can see there's a lot of similarities between the formula for the Richter scale and the pH scale. Whereas the decibel scale, you see that, that multiplying of 10. Anyways, uh, and all the earthquakes are relative to the intensity of the zero earthquake. Okay, so that's your, so we can look at all the other earthquakes that, that have, have taken place and they're their ratio is relative to the zero earthquake. So how many times as intense as a zero earthquake is an earthquake measured 2.4 on the Richter scale? 
So I'm going to show you two ways. I'm going to show you the formula, and then I'll show you the way of just answering the question by interpreting the Richter scale. So if you use a formula, you'll get 2.4 equals logarithm of i over i naught. Okay, so now 10 to 2.4 is the ratio. And that's right, i over i naught. So the ratio is approximately 251.1. That's a term, 251.2. So this uh, earthquake that measures 2.4 in the Richter scale is approximately 251 times as intense as a zero earthquake. So conversely, instead of using the formula, you could, you could have simply wrote 10 to the power of 2.4 minus zero, which is 10 to the power of 2.4, because the zero earthquake measures zero on the, on the Richter scale. So the difference between these two measures on the Richter scale is 2.4. So 10 to the power of 2.4 makes perfect sense. Okay. So I personally would have jumped to, instead of using the formula, I would have just wrote 10 to the 2.4 minus zero. Okay. And I would have achieved the, achieved the exact same answer. But nonetheless, you can use the formula. Because now, if they compared uh, two earthquakes with different measures on the Richter scale, I, I can use that. Uh, I can. I, I don't have to use this formula. I can just uh, find a difference between the two measures on the Richter scale, and then take ten to the power of whatever the difference is. So, therefore, uh, the earthquake. measuring 2.4 on the Richter scale is approximately 251.2 times as intense as a zero earthquake. Okay. So what is the magnitude of an earthquake 1,500 times as intense as a zero earthquake? So this is just m equals uh, logarithm of 1,500 because the ratio of the two intensities is 1,500. So let's see, about 3.17, 3.18. Uh, by the way, uh, an earthquake measuring 3.18, you can barely feel that. And yeah, it, it's not that significant. Earthquakes happen all the time and, and you don't feel them. You only um, feel the really large ones. Okay, the, develop a formula which determines the ratio of intensity of two earthquakes. So just like the pH question we did earlier on the first page, you could you know, create the formula by um, manipulating the original formula. But you know what? I'm just going to jump straight to it. So if I have the ratio of two, er uh, if, I, if I if I want to find the ratio of the intensities for two earthquakes, I'm just going to take my understanding of the Richter scale to answer this question. So 10 to the power of m sub two minus m sub one. I take whatever it is on the Richter scale, okay, the two measures, I subtract them, and it's 10 to the power of that answer. Because each unit change on the scale is uh, a tenfold change, okay? So there you go. If, let's say, if the difference between the two earthquakes is one unit, it's 10 to the power of one, which makes perfect sense, 10. That's how uh, the scale is designed, okay? Okay, and that's how all three logarithmic scales work. So regardless of whether you have the pH scale, the Richter scale, the decibel scale, the purpose is the same. You have uh, measures of intensity 
or concentration of hydronium ions, which vary over many, many orders of magnitude. So in order to help you interpret the different concentrations or the different intensities, we use logarithmic scales.